Okay, so I'll just keep going. This is a shorter case. So the challenge of this case is that this is probably the most difficult, the, the most complex medical patient I've ever taken care of in 25 years. So much so that this kid needed three central lines for ongoing medications. For, he needed six ports for all the medicines. So he has three central lines in, and then he developed SVC syndrome. So this kid has a mitochondrial disease with this autonomia. I don't know if you guys see a lot of mitochondrial diseases. They are the sickest of the patients you ever see. They usually don't survive. This kid is 10 years old, and actually, I give credit to the team that takes care of him. So he has got multiple endocrinopathies, including diabetes. He's got intestinal dysmotility, so he's TPN dependent. He's got an ostomy bag. He has recurrent kidney stones, has bilateral nephrostomy tubes. He's got von Willebrand's disease and an immunodeficiency disorder. He's got intermittent hypertension and hypotension and chronic pain. Now, this hypertension, hypotension may be due to the dysautonomia. Asthma, atopic dermatitis, and then chronic SVC syndrome. So he's got three central lines, and these are the medicines he takes. Fentanyl, labetalol, nicardipine, vasopressin, hydrocortisone, mucomis, methadone, heparin, and then boluses for fluid replacement. He's got five lines five medications that are not compatible, and one line for some intermittent meds. So you can imagine, this is a very complex kid. The best thing is that his brain is intact, so he's actually very normal, so nobody wants to make him DNR, because he's such a, a, a mentally intact kid. This is the patient rolling into the catheter. This is all the medicines that he's had to go. Now you can imagine, I just wanted to picture show how much stuff is going through his body. Now, I've never seen a kid with this many IV ports that with these medicines. So this is a picture we took of him before. He's got chronic headaches. He cannot lie flat. So this is a picture of him sitting up with his eyes closed. When he lays down a little bit, this is at an angle, you notice his face gets really red here. And that was the first thing that we noticed, that he can't lay flat. And even at an angle, he gets more headaches when he lays, lays, lays at an uh, incline, and his face gets really red. So we knew that this kid has SVC syndrome. Here are some of the veins you saw on his body. Uh, from the shoulders, right and left arms, uh, left shoulders, arms, and the abdomen. Upper, you see all the veins here. These are very engorged, superficial veins. So when we first got in here, this is the uh, a catheter in the SVC above the central line. Here is the RA. So you see that there's a 10 millimeter grating here. And in fact, we're talking about a 22 millimeter uh, of pressure in the SVC. Um, so here's the picture. You see that there's one line here. There's a second line from the IJ, and then a third line here into nominate. Again, this is no, I don't know where this vessel line is, but three lines. You can see that there's this shadow here, right here. This is all, all combination of old and new clots. You can imagine this is not gonna be, the blood can't get out very easily here. So the question is, what do you do? It's not that simple because you know, these are all surgically placed lines too, so you can't just take them out. So here are the options. They can go get, uh, do a surgical thrombectomy. This would be a pretty high risk procedure for them to open up the SVC to try to remove all this um, because all, all his other comorbidities. You can do an angioplasty, but we know that that's temporary. It's gonna recoil back. You could stent the SVC, but if you stented it, you're gonna jail those three lines. You can do a hybrid, let's say remove the lines and then stent it and put them back but he's totally dependent on these lines during the procedure. So what are you gonna do, stop all the drips and take out the lines? It won't be that easy. So again, this was something that we had to think through, how are we gonna handle this SVC syndrome with three lines that, are, that he needs? Um, so again, I know we don't have much time, so I'm just gonna keep going. So the thought was, why don't we put an IJ in and let's pull the line out of the SVC first. And you see here we are actually pulling the SVC lines that are across the SV away from the stenosis, and now it's parked up here uh, above the stenosis, and then you can sort of see the stenosis here. This is all the old schmutz, uh, thrombosed, uh, organized um, uh, clot that's sitting here, and of course with two, the, at least two of the lines in there, you can imagine the obstruction, but at least now the, S the lines are outside of this uh, area, and again, he's still getting his fluids. And then, of course, this part becomes a little easier at this point, so we went ahead and stented that. I left out all the, the in-between, but you see how we are able to crush all the stents away, and now we have to bring the lines back in. And so, yeah, there's the azagus flow here, now actually it flows back down to the SVC, and here we are um, 
we, we left the IVC and we take a tip deflector with this curve. Now you can sort of take this and pull on it and you'll see what happens and we're able to, oh, sorry, I didn't collect all the, but basically pull it back down because there's a loop that you left with the snare and now the lines are back through the stent and now you actually have opened up the SVC stenosis and kept the lines in meantime using it during the procedure. So this is the picture after the, the lines have been put back in through the stand and everything's wide open. See how nice the flow is. The previous uh, obstruction here is gone and uh, looks pretty good to me. So here's the pressure afterwards. So there's no gradient between the SVC and the RA. And here's the picture of the body. Now this is immediately afterwards. Again, no Photoshop. You see there's still some veins, but definitely not as engorged and as much as you see before. He actually, his headaches went away. I think the chronic headache was venous congestion uh, from the SVC syndrome. So this is uh, another view of that chest. That's it. So short presentation, short case.